Hi, Krista. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. So one of the downsides of a podcast is they can't see us as they're listening. But you have the coolest wallpaper behind you. Are you in uh, your salon or are you at home or where? I'm at home in my office. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. So Thank is you. that is that one of those things like you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you right. can buy off the shelf and put it up yourself. Is that one of those those things? Uh, no, I did not. I purchased this online and I had somebody put it up, but in the salon, we actually put up our own wallpaper. So I've done okay. both. Yeah. Because if you do, if you like go to a wallpaper company, it costs a fortune. Yeah. And this was expensive. Yeah. So that's, I get the fancy wallpaper and then I'll either do it myself or pay somebody to do it. But in my house, I paid somebody. Got it. Well, it looks very cool. It looks better than Thank my you. background. <laughs> Thank and you. and by by the way, these um, we have uh, video versions of these episodes on on the Hair Game YouTube channel. But most people, you know, we have thousands of people who listen, and we have like tens of people who actually watch. Yeah. That's just the nature of it. Okay, so for those who don't know you all already, you're a Reno hairdresser who focuses on extensions and yeah. teaching extensions to other hairdressers and helping them develop a, an extension business, which is, uh, I'm, I, many, many, many hairdressers want to have an extension business uh, because the nature of it is it's highly profitable, right? It can be really nice. So mm -hmm. we're gonna get into that, but I wanna start with you. I wanna start with where, where you're from and how you became a hairdresser in the first place. Where I'm from and how I became a hairdresser in the first place. All right. So I live in Nevada and I grew up in a small town in rural Nevada, like an hour from Reno. And so I'm currently located in Reno. So I grew up around this area. When I graduated high school, I just went to beauty school and I was 18 and started assisting. And I just did color. Like I didn't know how to make money. And once I found myself probably for like eight years in the same place, the same income bracket, making the same money, doing the same thing. I asked myself, why am I still making the same amount of money I've been making when I was, you know, 19, 20. And right. so I decided to take things a little bit more seriously. That's when social media started really working for people. So I started posting on there and I saw how that created an influx in my business. And then obviously the ability to take education from others was available now. And so I would travel a lot to learn and educate myself. And I grew my clientele and then I started to make more money. So I learned how to do that. And then I was mm -hmm. like, I want more. <laughs> so I learned <laughs> of, extensions. Of course. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm kind of chuckling because, um, th so I'm trying to do the math. So when you turned about 30 ish, were you getting quote unquote serious with your business? No, I was probably, maybe before that. Yeah, before that. I was probably like okay. 27, 28. Okay. I'm chuckling yeah. only because I had a conversation, I think it was yesterday, where somebody was turning 30 and they were like, gosh, it's really time to buckle down and get serious with my blah, 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 blah. They, they weren't a hairdresser, but, um, oh, yeah. you know, they were trying to. It's just one of those natural things as we you know, go towards 30 that we start thinking about getting serious about things. Yeah. I just didn't know how to make money. Like nobody taught me. My mom didn't teach me. And then I think salons in general, when you work at them, they teach you, they want you to do all these things. They don't teach you how. And so right. it took me a while to figure out how to do it. And yeah. then when I got into extensions, I, same thing, they'll teach you how to do them, but they won't teach you how to actually build the clientele. Right. how to make the money off of it. So when I, I started to slowly teach myself those things, and then by that time I had assistance and I started pouring into them and sharing it with them. And that's when I started to really realize how powerful it was and how much right. I could help others when I would see their results. And so that's what really drove me into opening a salon, educating others, and then it's just kind of, you know, snowballed from there. And so how long have you been in the this uh how long have you been doing the kind of this extension strategy i believe i started i started doing extensions in 2017 okay and then by 2019 i think is when i probably started 
teaching my assistants and really creating systems around it. And then I've been growing people for the last four to five years. Oh yeah. So you've been doing it quite a while now. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about, well, let's start with, for those listeners who obviously they know what extensions are, but I don't want to assume that everybody understands kind of the economics of extensions, like <laughs> how much the, how much the, the, the pieces cost, um, and how much you charge for them, how much time it takes. You, you know what I mean? Give us like yeah. the, yeah, the, just the fundamentals. So, like of an install? Yeah, like, like um, so, so a, I'm, I'm thinking about the listener who's driving to the salon right now and she focuses, let's say, on cutting, right? Most of her okay. clients are just cutting clients and she's been doing that for a number of years and she wants to level up. She wants to make more money. She knows that extensions, she knows it's expensive to do extensions, but you know, how much does it, does she have to, to, to spend to buy the extensions? Does she need to do it in advance? And then how much does she charge for them? You know, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So it's really case by case basis, just like color, right? It's a blanket statement, but I would say on average, like if you're starting out, the hair in and of itself is going to be the biggest cost. And so it can range anywhere from a hundred to $200 per weft. And on an average install, you're putting in anywhere from five to 10 wefts. So that's like just to purchase the hair, right? right. Then, then it's, you know, your labor, your time, and then your pricing on all of that. And so you want to make sure that your price point is covering all of those things and the client is purchasing the hair. So it's a, it's a good investment. I think it's kind of hard to just give a blanket statement around that, but that's kind of like what you could look for investing in your end. So your clients are obviously going to be paying much more than that. You want to make sure you're right. not doing, you're not paying to do their hair, which is, okay. Like, so which happens sometimes, unfortunately, yeah. but of course we all want to avoid that. And if, if somebody's listening to the hair game podcast, I think they, uh, they uh, are very consciously trying to avoid that situation and maximize yeah. their income. All right. So if I'm doing the math, right, as you ran through that, you're looking at between let's call it 500 and $2,000 just for the WEFs, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, are you, you're not keeping an inventory of WEFs. You, you're, you have a client who wants to come in, you've done a consult with them. So you know how long they want their hair, you know, what kind of hair to buy, you know, based off of what they have, um, or what they want to end up with the look they mm -hmm. want to end up with. And then you go buy the hair. Is that correct? That's how I would start. And then every time I do it, I'd probably order one to two more pieces. You'll start to understand what your favorite colors are. And then that's how you can slowly build stock so that if you have an existing client come in and the conversation comes up, then you will have hair on hand and it's a much easier and quicker upsell for you to make a return on that investment. So yes, starting out, I definitely purchased per client and sometimes I still do that, but I also keep certain colors on stock as well. Okay, that makes a ton of sense. Good to have stuff. Uh, good to have wefts, dip various, uh, various types of extensions in stock. But you don't want too much because then you have ten thousand dollars just you know sitting there. You want to make sure that that you're using it. Yeah. Okay. So so the five hundred to two thousand dollars of hair that you're buying, mm -hmm. w is there a rule of thumb on how much you're charging for the hair? Everybody's different. Well, the, or for do like you the break install. it up? Yeah, I mean the the hair and the install, and maybe that's a good question. Do you break it up? Do you itemize it into how much you're charging for the wefts of hair, and then how much you're charging for the install, or do you just do a lump sum? Everybody's so different, and so it's hard to like just answer this. However, I would say I can share how I do it personally. Mm -hmm. So how I do it is I prefer to purchase the hair and I charge 20% on top of that because once you get the money from the client, you get taxed on it, right? Yeah. And then you purchase it from the 
where you get the wefts or where you get the hair and then you get tax on that and then shipping. And then if you color it, so I, I charge more for that. Then I prefer to instead of, so that's one option. Mm-hmm. Other people can double the price of the wefts. There's so many different ways to do it, but that's my option. And then I prefer to have a higher price point for my installs. Okay. And then as you're describing the, the, the tax that you're having to pay at each step, I'm, I'm thinking about, of course, at the end of the year, I shouldn't say of course, yeah. at the end of the year, you have to make sure that you deduct the cost of those wefts from your income. Yes. Otherwise, you're working for free. Yeah. yeah. And some companies charge sales tax and some don't. And so you really just like, there's so much that goes into the extensions that you really have to pay attention to. Just, and right. I mean, at least you just need a bookkeeper to help you right. at the end of the day. <laughs> De- <laughs> but, definitely need a bookkeeper and a proper tax accountant. Yes, 100%. So those, uh, those things are all factored into it. And so then you can charge for your install and that could be package pricing or it could be a la carte, whatever you choose. But that would be for you to put the hair in, cut the hair, color match it, color your client's hair. And so some people break that up. Some people put it all together. Do you have a, when you price yourself, do you have a rule of thumb based on um, time or is it based on some combination of, time and you know whether there's additional services layered on like if you're like you just mentioned coloring it seems to me pretty clear that you would need to charge extra for that um that maybe not is not considered in just the time because you have color costs for example Mm -hmm. yeah so for me i'll price my install higher so that it covers the cost of me coloring the wefts Okay. And all of that. And then I color my client's hair and then install them. Some people do yeah. everything a la carte and just charge for a move up plus color. To mm. me, I find that that was not lucrative and mm. it just wasn't beneficial to me. So that's not how I price myself. But some people do that. Mm-hmm. And about what what's like the average duration of of a of an extension service? And And I know that's a hard answer to give because some people want just a little bit you know just a few wefts and some people 10 but uh, and i'm sure it it depends largely on that but like what's an average for me it's usually five to six hours for like an Mm -hmm. install my color usually is three to four hours and so the actual extension part is usually two to two and a half hours got it and so do you tend with your schedule you tend to book one person a day well, I have an assistant and it just depends on the day. I'm not extension mm-hmm. exclusive because I still love mm-hmm. doing color. So okay. I could do two installs in a day. I could do an install and two colors. Um, that would probably mm-hmm. be like an average day if I was doing like a, a new client, a new extension client. And tell us about the consultation because that seems uniquely important. Of course, we always talk about how important a consultation is. For sure. But... Less so maybe for a haircut. And, and then if you're talking about chemical services, it starts getting more important. And then with a, an extension service, I think it's extremely important. So yeah. you, don't, you, know, you don't waste thousands of dollars and many, many hours of your time. So how do you, how do you work out the, uh, the consult? Like walk us through, walk us th- through the, the process. Let's say you get DM'd by a potential client. Then what? So I love this question, first of all. Um, so I, <laughs> really? I, have assist, yeah, I, I like assist, that. I'm a system for everything. So I get DM'd by a client. I'm going to refer them to our website so that they can fill out the new client form. And then we'll yeah. reach out to them once we get that. And so that has image, it has, they have to upload images of their hair, the front, the side, and then the back split open so that we can see if there's banding, color, history. They have the questionnaires pretty lengthy. It goes over if they have box color, when's the last time they colored it, a lot of other things. And then once they come in, we have a whole system for the in-person consultation. And so my format for that is to gather as much history as possible and observe their hair before I ever ask them for their inspo photos. 
And then once I understand kind of where they're at, my biggest question is what brought you in here today? Because that's where we understand when it comes to especially extensions or hair, any sort of hair replacement or enhancement services, there's always a deeper reason as to why they're coming in. It's, it's more of a confidence issue. It's more of a trust issue. Mm -hmm. It's more of, it's different than color. And so you really want to understand why they're sitting in your chair. Because if we can understand why, then we can better solve their problem and make them trust us. Because if we're going to charge them, I mean, if it's $2,000 for them to get the hair, then they're paying you another, you know, $1,500, $2,000 to do it. We yeah. have to build trust, right? Yeah. And so I want to understand why are they in my chair and what are their problems so that I can actually solve them and offer them the best solution possible. And I sometimes can't. And if, if I can't, I want to be honest with that as well. Because my biggest thing is to be honest and transparent with clients around pricing and what's actually attainable for their hair. And so, what a, yeah, what oh, a go good ahead. point. Well, what, what a good point. And, uh, I think, I think in a normal for, for a, let's say a color service, the, the question is, can be the same, you know, what problem would you like me to help you solve kind of a thing? But yeah. with with extensions, it may even go a little bit deeper and be a little bit more consequential. You want to give us some examples of some answers, some client answers to that question that um, maybe were kind of unique to another service. That, that I'm sorry, unique <clears throat> versus another service. When you say unique, do you mean just something that I would pay attention to more so than if somebody sat in my chair and I was just running through a color consultation? Yeah, like okay. um, the the way that you described people talking about the problem that they feel or have that they want you to solve led me to believe that sometimes it's a little bit deeper than somebody just going in for a haircut yeah. or, you, you know, a, a root touch up, for example. I find that everything's a little bit deeper than most stylists make it out to be. And I think that that's a big reason why we struggle with charging high ticket prices for color cutting and extensions, anything, because we're not paying so much attention to the client. So I'll give you an example. I had a consultation, uh, two days ago, I believe. And when I asked the question, you know, what brought you in her answer was, it, it could be so simple, but when we actually asked them what I've had two, so I'll share the first one. The first one was I've gotten a little bit older. This woman was probably in her forties and her hair is thinner. And so she just kept doing this, showing me the top of it. She's getting married and she wants to it to be voluminous. She wants to feel beautiful and she wants to feel confident when she walks in the room. What she told, I told her those things. What she told me was, because my main thing with, with consultations is I need to extract this information so that I can mirror it back to you. Because if I can mirror back to you what you're saying in one or two sentences, you're going to trust me more. So she mentioned that she was older, had aged, her hair's gotten thinner as she's aged. She's getting married. So I said, you want to feel most confident when you walk into a room and on your wedding day, you want to feel like the best version of yourself, but she didn't want her hair any longer. And then she was, she, she felt validated. Yes. That's what I want. Okay. Amazing. I can give you that with this. I think one row of extensions will be best for you because you've never worn them. It'll give you the volume you're looking for without having to have any length. And it's not going to be too overwhelming because you've never worn them before. So that would be one example. Okay. Another one, this was for a color consultation, but I was able to talk to her about extensions in it. And I think mm. that everybody misses these opportunities because they don't pay attention to the problem. So the guest came in and she had her daughter with her. And I asked her, you know, what made you want to book this consultation for color? She box colored her hair. She told me how she's neglected herself. She doesn't feel like herself. Her hair's gotten thinner. And this is her first step in prioritizing yourself. Okay, great. So if we could get you this color, it would make you feel like the most confident version of yourself and like you're putting yourself first again, right? Yeah. Okay. Have you thought about extensions as well? I know you mentioned your hair was, has gotten thinner since you've had the baby. Yeah. I'm open to extensions. Okay. Awesome. She never asked me for them, but I saw the problem and my goal is to always help them solve it. I didn't pressure her into it. We booked her for color, but she was excited to talk about them when she comes in. Right. Very interesting. Okay, and then when you're when you're you're essentially informing her, educating her about extensions, and 
what problem they can solve and what they're going to be like and how expensive they are. How long a conversation is that? My consultations usually run anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. It depends on the guest. Mm -hmm. How, how excited are they? How big is this problem to them? A lot of times they don't understand the problem that they have and that's when it's going to take longer and you're going to have to really try to help them see what your solution offers them. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So I see that a big part of, of being an extensions hairdresser is thinking in advance to make sure that the outcome is a good one. Yeah, hundred percent. Give us some examples of if you don't do that, what can happen? What can go wrong? Gosh. Okay. <laughs> if we don't think in advance, so much can go wrong. I would say, I'll give you like the top three things that I see would be the first one would be not giving the client enough hair. And so extensions are unique because they can really give you a ton of confidence or they can diminish it. Nobody wants to look like they're wearing it. Right. And so if you're mm -hmm. self-conscious of the wind blowing, you being able to see it, the color doesn't match. There's a ledge like game over. And a lot of times I think stylists are uneducated because there's so much education out there. They're either uneducated, don't have enough practice before they start charging or they're not confident enough to actually properly quote somebody and tell, I mean, telling somebody, Hey, it's $2,000 just for me to get this hair can feel really uncomfortable until you get the reps in. Mm -hmm. They pro a lot of times I find that stylists just don't understand their worth either and the value of the service. And so then they're afraid, then they undercharge themselves. Well, when we do that, whenever we're undercharging, we're resentful of the service, the thing, right. And so yeah. then we're not, we're not offering the value that we know that we can and that the client deserves. Right. If you don't plan, if you don't understand how to color match, that's another thing. What's the, what's the absolute worst possible case that I could, that could come out of the hair plan for that. And, and to, to promise that you're going to deliver on that. And if you exceed it, great. Right. And I would say not having enough colors in stock because not having enough colors in stock Yeah. of hair. Yeah. Yeah, because so this it, again, goes back to the inventory thing. If yeah. you if you can, um, I hate to use the word upsell, but technically that's what yeah. it is. Yeah, you're problem solving though. I mean that that's you know you're an expert at this thing. You can solve a problem that many other hairdressers can't solve, and you could be of tremendous value to your client. And so if you see um, the solution to your client's problem is more volume and you know how to do it, then that's a tremendous value to your, to your client. And, I, and I'm sure you're earning loyalty for many, many years to come if, if, if you do a great job at it. Yeah. So being able to do it on the fly uh, does require having a decent amount of inventory of wefts of different lengths and uh, colors and textures. Yes. I don't think it's super important if you're just starting out, but... I, if it's something that you want to actually like turn into a lucrative career or shift your career into that mm -hmm. to make more money, a hundred percent. I think that it's very important. Okay. So the listener driving down the street on the way to the salon is thinking, uh, I think I know where to get extensions, but there's like all these brands and it's confusing. I don't know where to go. Yes. Where do they where go? Do they go? <clears throat> where do they go? It's so hard. I think as an extension specialist, so we struggle with promoting brands because I feel like so many of them, the quality doesn't stay consistent. And so you'll promote a certain brand and people will go to it or you'll use it and then you'll get hair and it won't be of quality as it once was. Or you go back to them and you're like, hey, these are the issues and they're not very supportive. And so it really is trial and error. I think, um, but I can share some of my favorite brands that I like because I'm that style of some sort of, so sure. I really like, I like laced hair. I'll order from them. I like addendum. That's a great company that I've had good luck with. It all really depends on your client as well though. And the type of hair that they have, what are sure. they, 
what are they doing? What are they using? I do like line one hair also. I haven't used their wefts, but I do keratin bonds too. And I love those. I'm trying to think of, I mean, those are kind of like the ones that I'll order in and out of. It depends. Okay. Every company too is usually um, smaller owned that I work with. And so they run out of stock of colors. And so I don't get the same thing from all the other ones. I'll kind of, you know, if it's not here, it'll be here. And that's also something you want to keep in, in mind as an extension mm -hmm. artist is make sure that you're ordering your hair at least a month in advance so that you can hopefully get the colors that you're looking for. And the bigger, interesting that you said, the uh, the companies that you like to work with are typically the smaller ones. Is there something that happens when there's a bigger company? Uh, are, is the hair less quality or uh, less consistent? Really? Yeah, generally. I think the consistency is on par, but the quality is low. Okay. the It's consistently low quality. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay, so when the when the wefts come in the mail, okay. I, I know you, you. I mean, in LA, there's we're surrounded with places, and you could go and you can buy um, there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I made that sound like there's one on every corner. There's not. I know there's a few big ones that people like to go to, like yeah, in the center. I think yeah. the hair shop is in LA too. Hair shop is a big one. Yeah, um, but oftentimes it comes in the mail, right? You order it, yeah. and then when it comes in the mail, is it perfect every time, or you need to like should you should you not open it until the morning of your client, or you should you open it immediately and see if this is what you want? You should open it immediately and see if it's what you want, okay. and just it, uh, make sure that you read their disclaimer on their website and in the receipt that you get because if sometimes if you open the package then you can't return it. But I, even Ooh. I like will return some pieces. A lot of Smaller companies will allow you to return them. Big companies, it's a lot easier to return them. But I would open it. And then if it's wefts, then you can color it. And I almost always color them. It just okay. really depends. I try to order from those brands. I find that I don't have to color them as much. But sometimes you have to reroute them or tweak them. And so that's why you want to make sure that whether you color them or don't color them, that you're putting that price point into the sell of the wefts because if you don't then you profit but usually you're doing some sort of adjusting to them and so you want to make sure that that is covered yeah all right very interesting and i guess the more you do it the more you order from a particular brand the more you figure it out and uh, you yeah. get used to the consistency or the inconsistency and and you adjust yeah all right all right definitely yeah. You invest a lot. You, I mean, extensions is hard, they're hard because you, you think you're going to make all this money and you will eventually, but you also have to be willing to invest in trial and error. And that's the, that's the most unfortunate part about it. You might make great money on two clients and then you screw something up on one and then you lose maybe in the beginning, right? Yeah, absolutely. I would also say with this, I think that people get into it prematurely. I think to be able to support the investment up front and to do it well, you should really build your color clientele far yeah. before you try to build an extension clientele. And I think that that's something that newer stylists don't do or they don't prioritize it. And then they wonder why they're not building the type of clientele that they, they want. And I think it's because of lack of really understanding color, having the income that you need to really go on on the extensions as well. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right, so give us some extension hair horror stories. Extension hair horror stories. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> like me doing bad extensions? It could be you screwing up something royally. Okay. And it it resulting in this uh, horrible experience that you can tell us about for our own entertainment and laughter, but it's also teaching us at the same time. It could be that, or it could be something that you've seen somebody else do in the salon. Yeah, uh, I'll share my own experiences. I remember when I first, so weft extensions, I'll stick with this because it's the most general thing that everybody does. It's the first thing I learned too. I didn't realize that the underneath of people's hair is so important. And so 
I it was one of my models. I just got all blonde hair because she was blonde, but we'd always do like partial on her so the underneath was dark. So I put the blonde hair in and her hair was to here and her extensions were pretty long. So her hair was maybe like know, six inches and her extensions were 18. Well, that last, you know, eight inches of her hair was all blonde and there was just this dark chunk underneath and none of it <laughs> blended because I didn't highlight the underneath <laughs> or and or I didn't add dark hair underneath so that it would blend. And that was my own personal learning experience, learning the hard way. For yeah. sure. I would say and, having it. Oh, go ahead. And so tell us, like, how how did that appointment conclude? I mean, I imagine you're both looking in the mirror at her <laughs> hair and you're both thinking the same thing. You're like, oh, shit, I forgot about that yeah. part. And then what is she like? Uh, are you going to put in, you know, some dark ones or are you going <laughs> to even it out somehow? And you're like, oh, shit, I don't have the weft or it's going to cost her another two grand. Like, yeah. how, how does that go? Well, I mean, at that point, she just paid for the hair and hair was okay. cheaper back then, too, because okay. hair goes up every year. So like hair was a little bit cheaper back then. But I think she probably paid eight hundred dollars for the hair. OK, so she paid eight hundred dollars and then okay. I put it in and I did my when I'm doing models, I do installs for free. I just okay. get them all, like I'm doing it for practice, right? So she didn't yeah. really complain, but she definitely took them out like two weeks into it. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and what, so that was a bummer. Yeah, no kidding. And so can, can those wefts be reused? Yeah, she could have reused them. And I could have highlighted the underneath. She ended up not getting them back in. And then like a year later, she ended up not being my client anymore. So uh, she just stopped bummer. coming to me. Yeah. But right. it, it wasn't because of the extensions, but yeah, that wasn't, she didn't have a good experience with them. However, yeah. luckily she was a model and she didn't pay full price either. Right. <laughs> oh, I had an assistant and I didn't tell her properly. This is hundred percent. Whenever your assistant makes a mistake, it's on you, not them. I didn't tell her how to wash them. And she was like scrubbing them. And there was probably know, four or five wefts that were just ruined. And it was just hundreds of dollars because Ugh. it was hand tied hair and it was all unraveling at the top. It was just so much money down the drain because of improper communication on my end and education for them. And so you can't uh -huh. help in the moment to be frustrated. I was really upset, but looking back, I'm like, that was all on me. So it really is just, there's a lot of communication that goes into all of it. And let me guess, that was the last time that ever happened. That was the last time that ever happened. Yes. <laughs> for both <laughs> I'm of sure, us. Yeah. I'm sure you put a lot of time into teaching your assistants how to wash before you let them touch them. After yes, that. absolutely. Yeah. Same with coloring. Well, this has been great. I appreciate all of the information and you, you're Krista Storm on Instagram and yeah. you educate on this kind of stuff. So, so tell us, uh, tell the listeners where they can find you. Yeah. So I'm Krista K at Krista K Storm on Instagram. Krista and K Storm, sorry Krista about that. Krista K Storm, that's okay. Yes. And then you can find me on TikTok at well at Krista underscore Storm. So those are the two different ones. I love sharing knowledge and education about this. This is amazing. Awesome. I love these questions. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, Krista. I, I really appreciate it. And hopefully um, some of our listeners are inspired to start doing extensions and learn from you. Yeah, I hope so too. Thank you so much for having me.